Hello, everybody, and welcome to our story time. We are going to be reading the Iliad, uh, specifically the Robert Fagel's translation. And as you can see by the map up on the stream, we will also be taking a look at where these events happen. So if you are just listening to the audio of this, if you're not paying attention, that's fine. You'll still get the book and the commentary. Uh, if you have the visual ups as well, you'll be able to see where we're pointing at things on the map. I think for the most part, the map won't be useful. Um, you know, we'll need to refer to it from time to time, but I expect it to be large swaths where there's no map needed. The reason we are doing this is it's been a long time since I've read the Iliad and the Odyssey, and I've never read the Aeneid. And I do a lot of D&D stuff, which is based in history um, and pulls from history, and it would be nice to have these stories fresh in my mind. And I also don't think I don't remember the translation that I read back when we had to read it in our mythology class in high school. Um, but this is supposed to be pretty good. Robert Fagels is more of a, I don't know the technical terms for the different types of translations, but he's arranged the translation in a more poetic form, which m I think that the two major schools of translation are like a true to meaning or true to form. And this tries to be closer to form where it's a little bit more poetic and I hope there's like a cadence to it or something as opposed to try and get the exact most literal translation possible. So this should make it uh, more enjoyable. You might want the other type of translation if you were doing academic or scholarly work and you needed very specific things. Uh, we're not academics or scholars here. We're just fans of history and literature. So the Iliad by Homer. I don't know when the original script was written, but it's, uh, I don't know, 2,500 years old, 2,800 years old. It's quite old. So, without further ado, we will start book one of the Iliad. Book one is called The Rage of Achilles. And here we go. Rage. Goddess, sing the rage of Peleus's son Achilles. Murderous, doomed, that cost the Achaeans countless souls, countless losses, hurling down to the house of death so many sturdy souls, great fighters' souls, but made their bodies carrion, feast for the dogs and birds, and the will of Zeus was moving toward its end. Begin, muse. When the first two broke and clashed, Agamemnon, lord of men, and brilliant Achilles. What god drove them to fight with such fury? Apollo, the son of Zeus and Leto, incensed at the king, he swept a fatal plague through the army. Men were dying, and all because Agamemnon spurred Apollo's priest. Yes, Chryseis approached the Achaeans' fast ships to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand, wound on a golden shaft, the wreaths of the god, the distant deadly archer. He begged the whole Achaean army, but most of all the two supreme commanders, Atreus, two sons, Agamemnon, Menelaus, all Argives, at Argives, geared for war. May the gods who hold the halls of Olympus give you Priam's city to plunder, then safe passage home. Just set my daughter free, my dear one. Here, accept these gifts, this ransom. Honor the gods who strike the worlds away, the son of Zeus and Apollo. What the hell is going on here? We're going to do a little bit of stopping and trying to figure things out. This is not a book on tape. This is a reading for people who don't understand what's happening, which is me, essentially. So this first couple of sentences is just like setting the scene for everything. Rage, goddess, sing the rage of Peleus, uh, son Achilles, blah, blah, blah. So there's some big battle shit going on. Begin muse when the fir two first broke and clashed, Agamemnon, lord of men, and brilliant Achilles. So we're beginning the story when Agamemnon, lord of men, and brilliant Achilles clashed. What, drove, what god drove them to fight with such fury? That's Apollo, son of Zeus and Leto. Incensed at the king, he swept a fatal plague through the army. Men were dying, all because Agamemnon spurred Apollo's priest. 
So Agamemnon pisses off Apollo's priest, which is this guy named Chrysis. I'm going to try and figure out how to pronounce this because I think it's going to come up a few times. There's a translate. There's a pronunciation guide in the back. Uh, Creases, I think is how it's pronounced. But if anyone out there knows for realsies, let me know. Cre yes, Creases approached the... Uh, Achaeans, the Achaean is, Achaea is the mainland Greece. Achaean would be of mainland Greece, so the Greeks. Let's double check that pronunciation as well, since we're going to be dealing with a lot of stuff. I guess I could just translate to Greek and Greeks for us. Jesus, there's so many names. Achaea, Achaeans and Achaea. Okay. Yes, Creases, Creasius. Nope, We're, this is Creasy. Yes, Creasy approached the Achaeans fast ships. Yes, the, the priest approached the, the Greeks fast ships to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom. I might just translate. Um, and bearing high in hand, wound on a gold staff, and wreaths of the god. Wound on a gold staff. No idea what that means. And wreaths of the god. The distant deadly archer. He begged the whole Greek army, but most of all the two supreme commanders. Atreus's two sons, Agamemnon and Menelaus. All Argives geared for war. Argives must be like Greek soldiers. Argives, alternate name for the Achaeans. Oh, all Argive, Argives, Argives, doesn't matter, they're also Greeks. Just a different word for Greeks. Excellent. So Agamemnon and Menelaus, all the Greeks geared for war. May the gods who hold the halls of Olympus give you Priam's city to plunder. It's a lot of names. Who the hell is Priam? E R I A M. Priam, king of Troy, son of Lemodon of the line Dardanus, father of Hector and Paris. Oh, wow. Okay, so Priam is the king of Troy. Got it. May the gods who hold the halls of Olympus give you the king of Troy's city to plunder, then safe passage home. Just set my daughter free, my dear one. Here, accept these gifts, this ransom. On the gods who strikes from worlds away, the son of Zeus, Apollo. So this all starts because some dude wasn't honoring Apollo enough, it sounds like. All the ranks of Greeks cried out their assent. Respect the priest, accept the shining ransom. But it brought no joy to the heart of Agamemnon. The king dismissed the priest with a brutal order, ringing in his ears, Never again, old man. Let me catch sight of you by the hollow ships. No loitering now, no slinking back tomorrow. The staff and the wreaths of God will never save you then. The girl, I won't give up the girl. Long before that old age, will overtake her in my house in Argos, far from her fatherland, slaving back and forth at the loom, forced to share my bed. Now go, don't tempt my wrath, and you may depart alive. The old man was terrified. He obeyed the order, turning, trailing away in silence down the shore where the battle lines of breakers crash and drag. And moving off a safe distance over and over, the old priest prayed to the son of sleek-haired Leto, Lord Apollo. Quote, Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow who strides the walls with Creasy and Scylla, sacrosanct, lords in power of Tendo Tenedos, Sminithus, god of the plague. We're going to check up some of these names here right now. So we had already heard about Creus. Now this is Creci. 
Chris A B C Creasy Creases is the priest of Apollo, father of Creasius. But here we're talking about Creasy, a town in the Trod. The fuck is the Trod? All right, we're gonna need some bookmarks here. We're gonna need to start looking up some places because we're already naming cities, we're naming people. Um, we're clearly dealing with Argos, which is one of these major towns in this um, story. So let's put Argos on the map, uh, which means I have to find out where Argos is. So close this stuff down. Um, Argos, ancient, ancient Greece. Where is Argos? Ah, Argos is right here. So we're going to put a little dot. And then we're going to add some text. And we're going to say Argos. And as we read through the story this map will evolve we might have to change fonts and styles we might even change the background map clearly this is just pulled from google maps you know so um we will make our way through it eventually um so that is argos dude this this uh story or this um This little line, a uh, few lines here about all and all the ranks of the Greeks cried out their ascent, respect the priest, accept the shining ransom, blah, 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 is pretty brutal. Okay, so strides over the walls of Creasy, C-H-R-Y-S-E, C-H-R-Y-S-E. Um, oh, that's an island. It's this island right here. Okay. C-H-R-Y-S-E. So, Creases and Creases both come from Creasy. Crease? Isn't this Crete? Is this Crete? Crease? Hold on. What is that big ass thing down there? I've heard of Crete before. I thought it was the big island at the bottom. Creasy, C H R Y. Crease. Several figures in Greek mythology, the name of various places occurring, an island near Lemnos in the Aegean Sea, said to have an altar of the goddess Chrysi. Is it just Crease? Am I, is it? It might just be Crease. Crease. Not Crete. That might just be the modern bastardization. Crete is to the south. Creasy is somewhere else. Okay, cool. That must be the right one. We must have Creasy, I suppose. All right, sweet. So, um, where were we? Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow, who strides along the walls of Creasy, that place there, and Scylla, Scylla. What the fuck is Scylla? Maybe I should stop cursing for this. This is classical Greek literature. It should not probably involve lots of... Um, let's see. Scylla, a town in the Trod. They keep saying in the Trod. What is the Trod?
I don't know. T R O A D, trod. This might take a little while, guys. Uh, it's the historical name for the Biga Peninsula in the northwest part of Anatolia. Okay, so the trod is this up here. Uh, you can't, this, if you're looking at my, at the, the stream, this region up here is the trod. So when we say Chisi of the trod, they mean, they must mean this island up here in this region. Cool. Oh, this is the island of Lesbos. This is Mount Idra, Ida. Okay, I'm slowly piecing together what these places are, I suppose. Excellent. All right, so God of the Silver Bow who strides the wall of Chisi and Sila, sacrosanct. The, so Apollo hangs out up here and is sacrosanct of these walls. Lord in power of Tenedos, Smithius. Tenedos, Smithius, God of the Plague and Tenedos. I'm hoping that like once we learn some of these locations, it'll be really easy to move on and forward and forward again. Um, but the beginning, we'll probably have lots of stopping and looking up names and places so we understand what's going on. I don't really want to just read things and like have names that I don't understand. I, I really did want to get somewhere with this. Tenedos. Tenedos Island in the northeastern Aegean off of the coast of Troy. So Tenedos is this little guy, according to my other map over here. This little tiny island is Tenedos. Tenedos. Already we're starting to have problems with the thickness of our map lines and names but this will do fine for now. Um, and Smintheus. Smintheus is probably the god of the plague. Double check anyway. Smintheos. Epitaph of Apollo that may identify him as the mouse god and so perhaps the one who bears the plague. Epithet of Apollo that may identify him as the mouse god, so perhaps the one who bears the plague. Okay. Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow, who strides the walls of Chisi and Sila, sacrosanct, lord in power of Tenedos, Smintheus, possibly Apollo, god of the plague. If I ever roofed a shrine to please your heart, ever burned the long rich bones of bulls and goats on your holy altar, now, now, bring my prayer to pass. Pay the Dananans back your arrow for my tears. This is a prayer that the old man is saying after he's been threatened with, you know, some stuff. Never again, old man, let me catch sight of you by the hollows of my ships. No loitering, no slinking, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Dananos. Dan... Dan... Annas. Dan... Ans? Dan Ans? Danans? Danans. A, B, C, D? Dan... Da... Da... Ne... Uns. Da... Ne... Uns. Alternative name for the Greeks. This is the third name for the Greeks that we've come across in the first page and a half. And I don't know what the difference between these alternative names for the Greeks are. And if the Robert Fagel's translation is just like, this is another word for the Greeks, and this is another word for the Greeks, I'm assuming the subtleties of meaning between these aren't important enough for us. Okay. Pay the Greeks back your arrows for my tears. His prayer went up and Phobos Apollo heard him. Phobos Apollo? 
what is the difference between Apollo and Phobos Apollo? Sorry about bumping the mic. That's might gonna happen a bunch. Phobos Apollo. H O E. No, it's uh, Phoebus, another epitaph of Apollo. Okay, so Phoebus Apollo is just Apollo. His prayer went up, and Phoebus Apollo heard him. Down he strode from Olympus's peak, storming at the heart with his bow and hooded quiver slung across his shoulders. The arrows clanged at his back as the god quaked with rage, and the god himself on the march and down he came like night over against the ships he dropped to a knee let fly a shaft and a terrifying clang clash rang out from the great silver bow first he went for the mules the circling dogs but then launching a piercing shaft at the men themselves he cut them down in droves and the corpses and the corpse fires burned on night and day no end in sight so this, the Greeks, let's recap what's going on here. What drove them to such a, fur, a fury? And sensed at the king, Apollo, son of Zeus and Leto. It drove these people to, it started the war. Um, and sensed at the king, he swept, uh, he, Apollo, swept a fatal plague through the army. Everyone was dying, all because Agamemnon spurred Apollo's priest. Uh, yes, Creasis approached the Greek ships fast. The Greek fast. The Greeks fast ships to win his daughter back. So the dude from this island goes to Agamemnon to try try and get his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand wound on a golden staff and wreaths of the god, the distant deadly archer. So he like brings some symbols of Apollo. He bring he's a priest of Apollo. He's trying to get his daughter back. He heads to the Greeks and is like, "Yo, give me my daughter back." He begged the whole Greek army, but most of all the two supreme commanders, Atreus' two sons, all the Greeks geared for war, blah, blah, blah. May the gods give you Troy to plunder and then safe passage home. Just set my daughter free, my dear one here. Accept these gifts as ransom. Honor the gods who strikes from worlds away, the son of Zeus Apollo. And then the Greeks cried out their assent, respect the priest, accept the ransom, but it brought no joy to the heart of Agamemnon. So the Greeks like, yeah, we'll take this ransom. We'll give you back your daughter. And Agamemnon's like, no, never again, old man. Let me catch you the sight. Let me catch sight of you by the hollow ships. No loitering now and not slinking back tomorrow. The staff and the wreath of gold uh, will never save you then. The girl, I won't give up the girl. Long before that, old age will overtake her in my house in Argos, far from her fatherland, slaving back and forth on the loom, forced to share my bed. So he's going to like, put her back into slavery and sexual slavery. Now go, don't tempt my wrath and you may depart alive. And the old man's terrified. He obeys the order, turns, trails away in silence down to the shore where the battle lines of breakers crash and drag and moving off a safe distance over and over, the old priest prayed to the sun. So the old priest prays to Apollo and then Apollo shows up and he just fucking butchers everyone with his bow. The corpse fires burned on night and day, no end in sight. Got it. Nine days, the arrows of God swept through the army. And on the 10th, Achilles called all ranks to muster. The impulse seized him, sent by the white armed Hera, that's Zeus's wife, I believe, grieving to see the Greek fighters drop and die. It says Achaean again, but I'm just going to translate for it's easier for me. Um, once they gathered, crowning the meeting grounds, the swift runner Achilles rose and spoke among them. Son of Atreus, now we are beaten back. I fear the long campaign is lost. So home we sail. If we can escape our death, if war and plague are joining forces now to crush the Greeks... But wait, let us question a holy man, a prophet, even a man skilled with dreams. Dreams as well can come our way from Zeus. Come, someone to tell us why Apollo rages so, whether he blames us for a vow we failed or sacrifice. If only the god would share the smoky savor of lambs and full-grown goats, Apollo must be willing still somehow to save us from this plague. So he proposed, and down he sat again as 
Kalachas rose among them. This actually sounds like the very end of the Trojan War. This sounds like people are already fighting at Troy, and this is them giving up after Apollo fucking wrecks the Greek army. I don't know if this... It's called the Rage of Achilles. Maybe this is a different war that's going on. We don't really have much context yet. It's pretty much just like Apollo killing people, and I'm not exactly sure why where people are fighting at this moment. Okay, uh, beaten back, da, 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 to save us from this plague. Apollo, Apollo, Greeks, son of Atreus. Let, let me double check the spelling of Atreus, the pronunciation of Atreus. Atros, Atrios, 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 Atrios. Father of Agamemnon and Menelaus. And Menelaus, okay. So, son of the father of Agamemnon and Menelaus. Son of... So da, 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 he's speaking to one of those two dudes, not sure which one. So he proposed, and down he sat again as Kalchas rose among them. Kalchas is... Kal... Kalkas, prophet of the Greeks, son of Thestor. Okay. So he proposed and sat, uh, and he sat again as Kalchas. I just lost the pronunciation of it in my brain. Kal. Kalkas. As Kalkas, the prophet, rose among them, Thestor's son, uh, the clearest by far of all the seers who scan the flight of birds. So he's a prophet who like watches the patterns of birds and then makes predictions based on where the birds go, a common form of divination during the for the Greeks. The Greeks faced north, I think, and the Romans faced south when they did their bird thinging. It might have been east to west. I don't remember the exact directions, but they looked opposite directions. Um, he knew all things that are, all things that are past and all that are to come. The seer who had led the Greek ships to Troy with the second sight that God Apollo gave him. For the army's good, the seer began to speak. So they, this is definitely on the shores of Troy somewhere. Achilles, dear to Zeus... You order me to explain Apollo's anger, the distant deadly archer? I will tell it all. But strike a pact with me. Swear you will defend me with all your heart, with words and strength of hand. For there is a man I will enrage, I see it now. A powerful man who lords it over all the Greeks. One the Greeks must obey. A mighty king, raging against an inferior, is too strong. Even if he can swallow down his wrath today, still he will nurse the burning in his chest until sooner or later he sends it bursting forth. Consider it closely, Achilles. Will you save me? So I got some shit to say. It's going to piss off a king. I need you to have my back. And the matchless runner reassured him. Courage. Out with it now, Kalkis. Kalkas. Kalkis? Kalkas? I keep forgetting how it's pronounced. Kalkas. Out with it now, Kalkas. Reveal the will of God, whatever you may know. And I swear by Apollo, dear to Zeus, the power you pray to, Kalkas, when you reveal your God's will to the Greeks, no one, not while I'm alive and see the light of day, no one will lay his heavy hand on you by the hollow ships. None among the armies... Not even if you mean Agamemnon here, who now claims to be by far the best of the Greeks. The seer took heart, and this time he spoke out bravely. Beware, he casts no blame for a vow we failed, a sacrifice. The gods enraged because Agamemnon stir spurned his priest. He refused to free his daughter, he refused the ransom. That's why the archer sends us pains, and he will send us more and never drive this shameful destruction from the Greeks. Not till we give back the girl with sparkling eyes to her loving father. No price, no ransom 
unpaid and carry a sacred hundred bulls to Creasy Town. There we can calm the god and only then appease him. So he declared and sat down. But among them rose the fighting son of Atreus, lord and far flung lord of the far flung kingdoms, Agamemnon. Furious, his dark heart filled to the brim, blazing with anger now, his eyes like searing fire. With a sudden killing look, he wheeled on Kalkas first, seer of misery. Never a word that works to my advantage. Always misery warms your heart, your prophecies. Never a word of prophet said or brought to pass. Now again, you divine God's will for the armies. Bruit it about as facts while the deadly archer multiplies our pains because I, I refused that glittering prize for the young girl Creseus. Indeed, I prefer her by far, the girl herself. I want her mine in my own house. I rank her higher than Clytemnestra, my wedding wife. She's nothing less in built or breeding, in mind or works of hand. But I am willing to give her back, even so, if that is best for all. What I really want is to keep my people safe, not see them dying. But fetch me another prize, and straight off too, else I alone of the Greeks go without my honor. That would be a disgrace. You are all witness. Look, my prize is snatched away. But the swift runner Achilles answered him just once. Or answered him at once. Just how, Agamemnon, great field marshal, most grasping man alive, how can the generous Greeks give you prizes now? I know of no troves of treasure piled, lying idle anywhere. Whatever we dragged from the towns we plundered, all's been portioned out. But collect it, call it back from the rank and file, that would be the disgrace. So return the girl to the god, at least for now. We Greeks will pay you back three, four times times over if Zeus grants us the gift somehow some day to raise Troy's massive ramparts to the ground so Agamemnon pisses off the priest by not giving the daughter back the priest prays to Apollo Apollo brings a plague and starts killing everyone the Greeks are like let's go talk to our diviner see what's going on the diviner's like I'm gonna get in serious trouble Achilles, you got to have my back. And Achilles is like, don't worry, I got your back no matter what, man. And then the diviner is like, Agamemnon, you pissed everyone off. You got to give the girl back, otherwise we're all going to die. And Agamemnon's like, well, if I give the girl back, then I don't get anything out of this. You guys have to give me something if I'm going to give her up. And I'll give her up to help you all, but like, I need something. And Achilles is like, we have already looted everything. We've already divided all of the treasure amongst our soldiers. What, you want me to go get the treasure back from our soldiers? Look. Give the girl back. We'll pay you back over time. Don't worry about it. We will pay you back. That's what I get so far. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll pay you back three to four times if Zeus grants us the gift somehow someday to raise Troy's massive ramparts to the ground. But King Agamemnon content countered, Not so quickly, brave as you are, godlike Achilles, trying to cheat me? Oh no, you won't get past me. Take me in that way. What do you want? To cling to your own prize while I sit calmly by, empty-handed here? Is that why you ordered me to give her back? No. If our general Argives will give me... Uh, if our generous Argives will give me a prize, a match for my desires, equal to what I've lost, well and good. But if they give me nothing, I will take a prize for myself, your own, or J Ajax's or Odysseus's prize. I'll commandeer her myself and let that man I go visit choke with rage. Enough. We'll deal with this later in due time. Now come, we haul a black ship down to the bright sea, gather a decent number of oarsmen along her locks, and put aboard a sacrifice, as Chryses herself in all her beauty. We embark her too. Let one of the leading captains take command. Ajax, Edomenius, trusty Odysseus, or you, Achilles, you, the most violent man alive, so you can perform the rites for us and calm the god yourself. So... Agamemnon is saying 
you can't take my prizes away. You want to cling to your own stuff while I sit here empty-handed? Not if our generous Argeeb. Who's this Argeebs again? Argeebs. Alternative name for the Greeks. Awesome. Right. Not if our generous Greeks... No, no, no. If our generous Greeks will give me a prize, a match for my desires equal to what I've lost well and good, but if they give me nothing, I'll take a prize for myself. So if they don't give... If the Greeks don't give me something... I'm going to go take something for myself. I'm going to take a prize from you, or I'm going to take one from Ajax, or I'm going to take from Odysseus. I'm going to show up and take her myself. Now, they say I'll commandeer her myself. I don't know if prize here is specifically a woman or if it's, like, loot as well. It, they might be using prize as a term for, like, picking up women from the towns that they've sacked. You know, for rape. Our heroes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> It's a dark and brutal time 3,000 years ago, everyone. A dark glance at the headstrong runners answered him in kind. Shameless, armored in shamelessness, always shrewd with greed. How could any Greek soldier obey your orders? Freely and gladly to do your sailing for you or fight your enemies full force? Not I. No, it wasn't Trojan spearmen who brought me here to fight. The Trojans never did me damage, not in the least. They never stole my cattle or my horses, never in... Pythia, where were the rich were where the rich soil breed strong men did they lay waste my crops? How could they? Look at the endless miles that lie between us, shadowy mountain ranges, seas that surge and thunder. No, you colossal, shameless. We all followed you to please you, to fight for you, to win your honor back from the Trojans. Menelaus and you, you dog face. What do you care about? Nothing. You don't look right or left. And now you threaten to strip me of my prize in person? Shields the one I fought long online. and hard? The son of a Greek? The son of Achaea handed her to me? My honors never equal yours. Whenever we sack some wealthy Trojan stronghold, my arms bear the brunt of the raw savage fighting. True, but when it comes to dividing up the plunder, the lion's share is yours, and I go back to my ships, clutching some scrap, some pittance that I love when I have fought to exhaustion. No more now. I go back to Pythia, better that way by far, to journey home in the beaked sheeps of ships of war. I have no mind to live linger here disgraced, brimming your cup and piling up your plunder. But the lord of men, Agamemnon, shot back. Desert, by all means, if the spirit drives you home. I will never beg you to stay, not on my account. Never. Others will take my side and do me honor. Zeus, above all, whose wisdom rules the world. You, I hate the most of all the warlords loved by the gods. Always dear to your heart. Strife, yes, and battles. The bloody grind of war. What if you are a great soldier? That's just a gift of God. Go home with your ships and comrades. Lord it over your Myrmidons. Myrmidon. That wasn't that like a type of Roman gladiator? Myrmidons, the people of Pythia in southern Thessaly, ruled by King Peleus and commanded at Troy by Achilles. Okay, so where's this Pythia? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L, M, N, O, P, P, H, P, H, P, H, T? Uh, and habits of, oh, Pythia is actually Phythia. Phythia. A sector of southern Thessaly, kingdom of Peleus, and home of Achilles. Where is Thessaly? I think this is Thessaly right here, but I don't know for certain, so we're going to look. I need to move this so I stop bumping it. It's not here, so let me find it on 
Let me Google Thessaly. Uh, no, Thessaly is this section of Greece right in here. Like, I'm going to do a quick doodle for us if you are watching. Where's my doodle? Here we go. Thessaly is this. No, it goes up here like this. That's Thessaly. All the way out to these suckers. So, and Phthia, Phthia is like right up here? Somewhere over here is Phthia. was a city in the district of ancient Thessaly, frequently mentioned in Homer's Iliad as the home of the Myrmidons. Myrmidons. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we're just going to put it right. Is Lamia this? No, it's not the same thing. Can I get Pythia GPS coordinates, please? GPS coordinates. Oh yeah, no, it's, it is this. This plot right here, basically. This is Ithia. Okay, so Ithia is where Achilles comes from. Oops. Oh, we don't have that in that font. Okay. How do you spell Achilles exactly? It'd be embarrassing if I misspelled Achilles on this map. Okay, and Argos is Agamemnon. Ag... Ag uh, mem non. You know, we might not even need Sparta on this map. I don't even know if the Spartans are take you know involved in any of this nonsense. Okay, cool. We're gonna do a quick zoom. Shields up, weapons online. Ooh, we should probably. We should probably prevent. Our sub stuff from making sounds. It's fine. Where are we? Oh god, no, there's Greek people in chat? This is the worst. I am so sorry. I am gonna butcher all of your places and all of your names and just, you know, forgive me ahead of time for the horrors I do to your language or the ancient version of your language. I beg your forgiveness. All right, where were we? da 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 um, go home with your ships and comrades, lord it over your Myrmidons, you are nothing to me, you and your overweening, overweening anger, but let this be my warning. Yeah, let, but let this be my warning on your way, since Apollo insists on taking my Creseus, like, that's the, that's gotta be the girl. Creseus of Creasy, daughter of 
Creseus. She's Creesis, daughter of Creesius. CHR. Okay, hold on. Creasy is the town. Creasyis is the daughter. Creases is the priest. Creasyis, Creases, Creasy. Woo! Okay. Let's do it. Since Apollo insists on taking my Creseus, I'll send her back in my ships with my crew. But I, I will be there in person at your tents to take Creseus in all her beauty, your own prize, so you can learn just how much greater I am than you. And the next man may shrink from matching words with me, from hoping to rival Agamemnon strength for strength. So Agamemnon is such a little bitch, it sounds like, that he's got to give up the his captive woman in order to save all his people. And now he's like, well, when I'm going to send her back and I'm going to come and take your woman, Achilles. Achilles' woman is Briseus. Briseus, daughter of Briseus. Who is the father? Okay, yeah, yeah. Bri? Bri? Maybe it's Briseus. I think it's Briseus, which means that the, the Creseus is probably Chryseus. It's probably Chryse is the town. Chryseus is the daughter, and Chryses is the priest. I think that's the, the correct pronunciation. I don't know. Someone correct me. We haven't even gotten to Helen yet. Where the hell is Helen? Blah, 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 blah. Um, do, 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 do. I will take, but I, I will be there at person, in person at your tents to take Briseus in all her beauty, your own prize, so you can learn just how much greater I am than you. And the next man may shrink from matching words with me, from, hop, uh, from hoping to rival Agamemnon strength for strength. He broke off and anguish gripped Achilles. His heart, the heart in his rugged chest was pounding. His rugged chest? Rugged chest, as in like covered with hair. Uh, the heart in his rugged chest was pounding, torn. Should he draw the long, sharp sword slung at his hip, thrust it through the ranks and kill Agamemnon now? Or check his rage and beat his fury down? As the racing spirit veered back and forth, uh, as his racing spirit veered back and forth, just as he drew his huge blade from its sheath, down from the vaulting heavens swept Athena. The white-armed goddess Hera sped her down. Hera loved both men and cared for both alike. Rearing behind him, Pallas seized his fiery hair. Only Achilles saw her, none of the other fighters. Struck with wonder, he spurned around. He knew her at once. Pallas Athena, the terrible blazing of those eyes, and the winged words went flying. Why, why now? Child of Zeus with the shield of thunder, why come now? To witness the outrage Agamemnon just committed? I'll tell you this, and so help me, it's the truth. He'll soon pay for his arrogance with his life. Um, that must have been Achilles speaking. Her gray eyes clear, the goddess Athena answered, Down from the skies I came to check your rage, if only you will yield. The white-armed goddess Hera sped, Hera sped me down. She loves you both, she cares for you both alike. Stop this fighting now, don't lay hand to sword. Lash him with threats of the price that he will face. And I tell you this, and I know it is the truth. One day glittering glyph gifts will lie before you, three times over to pay for all his outrage. Hold back now, obey us both. So she urged, and the swift runner complied at once. I must. When the two of you hand down commands, goddess, a man submits through his broken through though his heart breaks with fury. Better for him by far. If a man obeys the gods, they're quick to hear his prayers. Achilles. 
He's a faithful dude. He's obeying the gods. He's kind of pissed, but he's keeping it in check. Good job, Achilles. And with that, Achilles stayed his brutal hand, his burly hand on the silver hilt and slid the huge blade back into its sheath. He would not fight the order, the orders of Athena. Soaring home to Olympus, she rejoined the gods aloft in the halls of Zeus, whose shield is thunder. But Achilles rounded on Agamemnon once again, lashing out at him, not relaxing his anger for a moment. Staggering drunk with your dog's eyes, your fawn's heart. Never once did you arm with the troops and go to battle, or risk an ambush packed with Greeks, uh, with Achaea's picked men or risk an ambush packed with the with Greeks picked men. You lack the courage. You see the death coming. Safer by far you find to foray all through camp, commandeering the prize of any man who speaks against you. King who devours his people, worthless husks, the men you rule. If not a trides, this outrage would have been your last. If not a trides, a trides looks like a name. Atrides, Atrides. Atrides, son of Atreus, uh, patronymic of Agamemnon or Menelaus. Atrides, oh, Atrade, Atrade, no. Atreus is the father of Agamemnon and Menelaus, and Atrides means like son of Atreus. Okay, so. Atrides, where were Atrides, Atrides, Atrides. Where were we? Before I threw the camp. The king who devours his people, worthless husks, the men you rule. If not son of Atreus, I've already forgotten the guy's name, uh, this outrage would have been your last. I tell you this, and I swear a mighty oath upon it, by this, this scepter, look, that never again will put forth crowns and branches. Now it's left its stump on the mountain ridge forever, nor would it, will it sprout new green again. Now the brazen axe has stripped its bark and leaves, and now the son of Greeks pass it back and forth as they hand their judgments down upholding the honored customs whenever Zeus commands the scepter will be the mighty force behind my oath some day I swear a yearning for Achilles will strike Achaea's sons and all your f armies Achaea is Greek the Greeks right god damn why are they why are there five names for the same freaking people who would do this A C H A E A. A general collective name for mainland Greece. Okay. I swear a yearning for Achilles will strike Greeks' sons, the mainland Greece's sons, and all of your armies. By then, Atrides. Son of Atreus. Oh, right. By then, Atrides, the son of Atreus. By then, Atrides, har uh, harrowed as you will be, nothing you can do can save you. Not when your hordes of fighters drop and die, cut down by the hands of man killing Hector. Then, then you will tear your heart out, desperate, raging that you discarded the best of the Greeks. Uh, man killing Hector is the dude defending Troy, one of the dudes defending Troy. Okay. Then you will tear your heart out, desperate raging that you disgrace the best of the Greeks. Down on the ground he dashed the scepter, sudden, bright with golden nails, and then took his seat again. The son of Atreus, that means Agamemnon, smoldered, glancing across at him. But Nestor rose between them, the man of winning words, the clear speaker of Pylos, Sweeter than honey from the tongue, the voice flowed on and on. Two generations of mortal men he had seen go down by now. Those who were born and bred with him in the old days, in Pylos's holy realm, and now he ruled the third. Nestor. I know the name Nestor. Nestor. 
Achaean, son of Nellius, king of the Philians, father of Antilius and Ther Thrasymedes, the oldest of the Greek chieftains. Okay. So the old wise Nestor's like the, the oldest of the chieftains. king of this other place, father of these other people. So he's a, like, big deal sort of guy. Uh, I mean, they're all big deals, I guess. But Nestor rose between them, the man of winning words, and spoke, cl and the clear speaker of Pylos. Pylos. Pylos the pylon? No. Pylos. Pylos. Pylon? Oh, there's a person named Pylon, but it's Pel P P E Lon? I don't know. No, it's Pylon. Uh, but we're looking at Pylos. It's not here. Ah, uh, no, no. Pelians are inhabitants of Pylos. Pylos is a place. The clear speaker of Pylos. So the the guy who clearly speaks for the town of Pylos. Where's Pylos? I mean, it's in, it's on the Greek mainland, but let's get a location. Pylos, ancient Greece. Oh, Pylos is, oops, way the fuck over here pylos is over here you know what we're just gonna get rid of sparta we're gonna call this pylos we don't need sparta yet and nestor is from pylos Let's update the map just a little bit so we can have some better, you know, so these things fit a little bit more easily. There we go. Now this is working out a little bit nicer. All right. Nestor, oldest of the chieftains, man of winning words, the clear speaker of Pylos, sweeter than honey from his tongue, the voice flowed on and on. Two generations of mortal men he had seen go down by now, those who were born and bred with him in the days of old in Pylos's holy realm, and now he ruled the third, that's the third generation. So he's seen two generations go to war and fight and die, and now he's watching a third generation of people fight and die. He pleaded with both kings, with clear goodwill, no more, or enormous Enormous sorrow comes to all Greece, all mainland Greece. How they would exult, Priam and Priam's sons. Where was Priam again? Priam and Priam's sons and all the Trojans. Oh, they'd leap for joy to hear the two of you battling this way. You who excel us for uh, excel us all. First in Greek councils, first in the ways of war. Stop. Please listen to Nestor. You are both younger than I, and it is and in my time I struck up with better men than you. Even you, but never once did they make light of me. I've never seen such men. I never will again. Men like Pirithios, Dryas, that fine captain. Cineus and Exidius and Polyphemus, ro royal prince, and Theseus, Aegeus's boy, a match for the immortals. They were the strongest mortals ever bred on earth, the strongest, and they fought against the strongest too. Shaggy centaurs, wild brutes of the mountains, they hacked them down, terrible, deadly work. And I was in their ranks, fresh out of Pylos, far away from home. They enlisted me themselves, and I fought on my own, a freelance, a single hand, uh, a freelance single handed. 
and none of the men who walked the earth these days could battle with those fighters, none. But they, they took to heart my counsel, marked my words. So now you listen too. Basically, I've known better, stronger fighters than you will ever be, and they listen to me, so shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm about to tell you. Yielding is far better. Don't seize the girl, Agamemnon, powerful as you are. Leave her. Just as the sons of Greece gave her his prize from them, his prize from the very first. And you, Achilles, never hope to fight it out with your king, pitting force against force. No one can match the honors dealt a king you know, a sceptered king to whom great Zeus gives glory. Strong as you are, a goddess was your mother. He has more power because he rules more men. A trides. End your anger. Look, it's Nestor. I beg you, cool, cure, cool your fury against Achilles. Here the man stands over all Greeks' army, all of Greece's armies. Our rugged bulwark braces for shocks of war. But King Agamemnon answered him in haste. True, old man. All you say Shields is fit and proper. Online. We're going to mute this. All you say is fit and proper, but this soldier wants to tower over the armies. He wants to rule over all, to lord it all, to oh, lord it over all, give out orders to every man in sight. Well, there's one I trust who will never yield to him. The fuck does this mean? A true old man, all you say is fit and proper, but this soldier, Agamemnon, wants to tower over armies. He wants to, he's speaking about himself in the third person, I think. He wants to rule over all, to lord it over all, give out orders to every man in sight. Well, there's one I, there's one I trust who will never yield to him. Who is there's one? As that, they must be talking about Achilles. What if the everlasting gods have made a spearman of him? Have they entitled him to hurl abuse at me? Yes, blazing Achilles broke in quickly. What a worthless burnt out coward I'd be called if I'd submit to you and all your orders, whatever you blurt out. Fling them at others. Don't give me commands. Never again, I trust, will Achilles yield to you. And I tell you this, take it to heart. I warn you, my hand will never do battle for that girl, neither with you, king, nor any man alive. You Greeks gave her. Now you've snatched her back. But the rest I pos but the rest I possessed beside my fast black ship. Not one bit of it can you seize against my will, Atrides. Come try it, so the men can see that instant your black blood gush and spurt around my spear. So Nestor tries to chill them out. Agamemnon is like, I want to be the best, but Achilles is a little bitch. And Achilles is like, fuck you, Agamemnon. I'll never take your orders. Come and try it and give them to me. I will cut you down if you even attempt to do so. It's a pretty heavy drama that we're thrust into. And who is this Atrides again? I'm sorry, guys. You might be picking up these names, but this is a lot of words and a lot of names. And my memory, as you might know, is sort of fishy. So I will need to continually look up names over and over and over again. A tri oh, Atrides is the son of Atreus. A trade is the sons of Atreus. A trades is a singular son of Atreus. Okay. Atreides. Isn't there in Dune, isn't there a house named Atreides? Wouldn't that be the sons of Agamemnon or the son of Atreus? Interesting. Okay, anyway, where were we? Blah, 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 blah. But not one bit of it can you seize against my will, son of Atreides, Atreus. Come try it so the men can see that instant your black blood gush and spurt against my spear. Once, uh, once the two had fought it out with words, battling face to face, both sprang to their feet and broke up the muster beside the argive squadrons argive must be like of or pertaining to the greeks but we're gonna check it anyway argives alternative name for the achaeans and the achaeans is an alternative name for the greeks so right achaeans greeks and their allies 
ranged against the Trojans. I'm not sure what it means by ranged against the Trojans, but okay. Cool. Both sprang to their feet and broke up the muster beside the Greeks and their allies' squadrons, the, the armies of Greeks. Achilles strode off to his trim ships, to his trim ships and shelters, back to his friend Patroclus and their comrades. Agamemnon had a vessel hauled down to the sea. He picked out twenty oarsmen to man her locks, put aboard the cattle for sacrifice to the god, and led Chryseis in all her beauty amidship. Versatile Odysseus took the helm as captain. All embarked. The party launched out on the sea's foaming lanes, while the son of Atreus told his troops to wash, to purify themselves of the filth of plague. They scoured it off, threw scourings into the surf, and sacrificed to Apollo full-grown bulls and goats along the beaten shore of the fallow barren sea and savory smoke went swirling up to the skies. So they sacrificed go um, bulls and goats. Common thing. You sacrifice some things, get the favor of the gods, make sure your voyage is going to go well. You make sacrifices all the time, any time you want something to go well. So the men were engaged throughout the camp, but King Agamemnon would not stop the quarrel. At first threat, he hurled against... The first threat he hurled against Achilles. He called Talthebius and... Your baits briskly, the, his two heralds, ready, willing aids, go to Achilles' lodge. Take Briseis at once, his beauty, Briseis by the hand, and bring her here. But if he will not surrender her, I'll go myself. I'll seize her myself with an army at my back and all the worse for him. He sent them off with a strict order ringing in their ears. Against their will, the two men made their way along the breaking surf of the barren salt sea and reached the Myrmidon shelters and their ships. The Myrmidons are Achilles' dudes from Pythia. Pythia. They found him beside his lodge and black hull, seated grimly, and Achilles took no joy when he saw the two approaching. They were afraid. They held the king in awe and stood there, silent. Not a word to Achilles, not a question, but he sensed it, uh, he sensed it all in his heart, their fear, their charge, and broke the silence for them. Welcome, couriers, good herald of Zeus and his men. Come here, closer. You have done nothing to me. You are not to blame. No one but Agamemnon. He is the one who sent you for Briseis. Go, Patroclus, prince. Bring out the girl and hand her to them so they can take her back. But let them both bear witness to my loss. In the face of blissful gods and mortal men, in the face of that unbending, ruthless king, if the day should come when the armies need me to save their ranks from ignominious stark defeat, the man is raving with all the murderous fury in his heart. He lacks the sense to see a day behind, a day ahead, and safeguard the Greeks battling by the ships. Patrocles obeyed his great friend's command. He led Briseis and all her beauty from the lodge and handed her over to the men to take away. And the two walked back along the Argive ships, where she trailed behind, reluctant every step. But Achilles wept and, slipping away from his companions far apart, sat down on the beach of the heaving gray sea and scanned the endless ocean. Reaching out his arms again and again, he prayed to his dear mother. Mother, you gave me life, short as that life will be. So the last Olympian Zeus, so at least Olympian Zeus thundering up on high, should give me honor. But now he gives me nothing. Atreus' son, Atreus' son, Agamemnon, for all his far-flung kingdoms, the man disgraces me, seizes and keeps my prize, and tear he tears her away himself. So he wept and prayed, and his noble mother heard him, seated near her father, the old man of the sea in the salt green depths. Suddenly up she rose from the churning surf like mist and settled down beside him as he wept, stroking Achilles gently, whispering his name. My child, why in tears? What sorrow has touched your heart? Tell me, please, don't harbor it deep inside you. We must share it all. Achilles' mother is Athena? 
It's like he's like born of a immortal god. Is it Athena? I think it's a Achilles' mom. Nope, it is Thetis. She was a Nared. Okay, wasn't a full fledged god. It was a Nared. Thetis. Gotcha. Okay. So Achilles pours out his heart. His mom shows up and says, what's hurting you? And now from his depths, the proud runner groaned. You know, you know, I labor through it all. You know it all so well. We raided Thebe once. Itian's sacred citadel, we ravaged the place, hauled the plunder here, and the armies passed it around, share and share alike. Then they chose the beauty Chryseus for Agamemnon, but soon her father, the holy priest of Apollo, the deadly distant ar the distant deadly archer, Chryses, approached the fast trim ships of the Greeks armed in bronze to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand wound on a golden staff. They keep saying, talking about this wound on a golden staff and I have no idea what that means. If anyone has any idea what wound on a golden staff, you know what, maybe we should just Google that shit. We have that power. Wound on a golden staff. Nope. No idea. All I get are results for staph infections, which I'm pretty sure is a little bit different. Cool. Doesn't matter. Do to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand, wound on a golden staff, the wreaths of the god who strikes from worlds away. He begged the whole Greek army, but most of all the two supreme commanders, Atreus's two sons, and all the ranks of Greeks cried out their assent. Respect the priest, accept the shining ransom, but it brought no joy to the heart of Agamemnon. Our high and mighty king dismissed the priest with a brutal order ringing in his ears, and shattered with anger, the old man withdrew, but Apollo heard his prayer. He loved him deep. He loved him deeply and loosed his shaft at the Argives. That's the Greek armies and their allies, right? Gotta be. Alternate name for the Greeks and their allies. Mainland Greeks and their allies. Um, do, 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 do. Brought no joy. High and mighty king dismissed the priest with a brutal order ringing his ears and, shat uh, and shattered with anger. The old man withdrew, but Apollo heard his prayer. He loved him deeply. He loosed his shaft at the Greek army's withering plague, and now the troops began to drop and die in droves. The arrows of God went showering left and right, whipping through the the Greeks vast encampment but the old seer who knew the cause full well revealed the will of the archer god Apollo and I was the first mother I urged them all appease the god at once that's when the fury gripped the son of Atreus Agamemnon leapt to his feet and hurled his threat his threats been driven home one girl Chryseus the fierce the fiery-eyed Achaeans the fiery-eyed Greeks ferry out in a tr fast trim ship to Chrysi Island, laden with presents for the god. The other girl, just now the heralds came and led her away from camp. Briseus's daughter, the prize the armies gave me. But you, mother, if you have any power at all, protect your son. Go to Olympus, plead with Zeus. If you ever warmed his heart with a word or any action, Time and again I heard you claim in father's halls, boasting how you and you alone of all the immortals reached, uh, rescued Zeus, the lord of the dark storm cloud, from ignominious stark defeat. That day the Olympians tried to chain him down. Hera, Poseidon lord of the sea, and Pallas Athena, you rushed to Zeus, dear goddess, broke those chains, or quickly ordered the hundred-handed 
the hundred hander to step Olympus, to steep Olympus. A hundred hander? It must mean like a hundred feet, hundred hands tall. Quickly ordered the hundred hander to steep Olympus, that monster whom the immortals call Bri Briarius. Briarius? What sort of monster is this? Briarios. Name used by the gods for the hundred handed hundred handed giant called a Gaon. A Gaon. Yeah. Um broke the chains, quickly ordered that the hundred hander to steep Olympus, that monster whom the immortals call Bear Briarus, but every mortal calls the sea god's son. Though he's stronger than his father. Down he sat, flanking Kronos's son. Kronos is Zeus's dad. Um, down he sat, flanking Kronos's son, gargantuan in all the in the glory of it all, and the blessed gods were struck with terror then. They stopped shackling Zeus. Remind him of that. Now go and sit beside him, grasp his knees, persuade him somehow to help the Trojan cause, to pin the Greeks back against their ships, trap them round the bay, and mow them down so all can reap the benefits of their king. So even mighty Atrides can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the uh, Greeks. And Theseus answered, bursting into tears, Oh, my son, my sorrow, why did I ever bear you? All I bore was doom. Would to God you could linger by your ships. Without a grief in the world, without a torment, doomed to a short life, you have so little time. None, not only short now, but filled with heartbreak too, more than all other men alive, doomed twice over. Ah, to a cruel fate I bore you in our halls. Still I shall go to Olympus, crowned with snow, and repeat your prayer to Zeus who loves the lightning. Perhaps he will be persuaded. Some serious shade from his mom, like, oh, your life is so hard, I wish I never even brought you into this world. You gotta die twice, you're so doomed, your life is so hard, great Achilles. I don't know if that's supposed to be sarcastic, but it comes across as sarcasm to me. It might be intentional. I know the Greeks are pretty, like, heavy with their drama and shit, that might be super serial. But for me, that, I can hear my own mom being sarcastic with me when I read that passage. But you, my child, stay here by the fast ships. Rage on at the Greeks. Just keep clear of every foray in the fighting. Only yesterday Zeus went off to the ocean river to feast with the Ethiopians, lordly, loyal, lordly men, and all the gods went with him. But in twelve days the father returns to Olympus. Then, for your sake... Up I go to the bronze floor, the royal house of Zeus. I'll grasp at his knees. I think I'll win him over. With that vow, his mother went away and left him there alone, his heart inflamed for the sashed and lovely girl they'd wrenched away from him against his will. Meanwhile, Odysseus drew close to Creasy Island. Cry... Creasy Island. I think it was Creasy. Island bearing the splendid sacrifice in the vessel's hold and once they entered the harbor's deep the harbor deep in bays they furled and stowed the sail and the black ship they lowered the mast by the four stays smoothly quickly let it down on the forked ma uh, mast crutch and rowed her into a mooring under oars so they you know they take down the sails they row her up on shore out went the bone the bow stones out went the bow stones, cables fast astern. Oh, the bow stones, uh, like the weight that you must put in the front of the ship, maybe. Cables fast astern, and the crews themselves swung out into the breaking surf, leading out the sacrifice for the god archer Apollo, and out of the deep sea ship, Chryseus stepped too. Then tactful Odysseus led her up to the altar, placing her in her loving father's arms and said, Chryseus, Chryseus. The Lord of men, Agamemnon, sent me here to bring your daughter back and perform a sacrifice, a grand sacrifice to Apollo for all the Greeks' sake, so we can appease the god. Who's loosed such grief and torment 
on the Argibs, on the the Greeks and their allies. So here's your daughter. We're gonna make a sacrifice so we can appease Apollo, so that uh, so we can appease Apollo, who's caused such grief and torment for uh, me and my allies. With those words, he left her in Chrysis' arms, and the priest embraced the child he loved, exultant. At once the men arranged the sacrifice for Apollo, making the cattle ring his well-built altar. They rinsed their hands and took up barley. Rising among them, Chryses, Chryses stretched his arms to the sky and prayed in a high resounding voice, Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow, who strides the wall of Chryse and Scylla sacrosanct, lord and power of Tenden Tenedos. If you honored me last time and heard my prayer and rained destruction down on all Achaea's, all the Greek ranks, now bring my prayer to pass once more now at last drive this killing plague from the armies of the Greeks his prayer went up and Phobos Apollo heard him and soon the men had prayed and flung the barley first they lifted back the heads of their victims slit their throats skinned them and carved away the meat from their thigh bones and wrapped them in fat the double folds sliced clean and topped with strips of flesh and the old man burned these over dried split wood and over the quarters poured out glistening wine while young men at his side held five pronged forks. Once they burned the bones and tasted the organs, they cut the rest into pieces, pierced them with spits, roasted them to a turn, and pulled them off the fire. The work done, the feast laid out, they ate well, and no man's hunger lacked a share of the banquet. When they had put aside the desire for food and drink, the young men brimmed the mixing bowls with wine, and tipping the first drops for the god, in every cup they poured full rounds for all. And all day long they appeased the god with song, rising a ringing hymn to the distant archer god who drives away the plague, those young Greek warriors singing out his power. And Apollo listened, his heart, his great heart warm with joy. So they, they first they lifted the heads of the victims, slit their throats, skinned them, and carved them away. I, I think they're talking about cows and goats here. Bulls and goats, not people. Um, so they, they make some sacrifices. They give the gods a certain fun, uh, portion of the food, which they burn, and then they eat the rest while singing and drinking and praising Apollo. And Apollo hears it, and his heart was warmed with joy. Then when the sun went down and the night came on, they made their beds and slept by the stern cables on the boat. When the young dawn with her rose-red fingers shone once more, they set sail for the main encampment of the Greeks. The archer sent them a bracing following wind, that's Apollo, and stepped the, and stepped the mast, steeped? steeped the mast, wa spread white sails wide, the wind hit full and the canvas bellied out, and a dark blue wave foaming up at the bow sang out loud and strong as the ship made way, skimming the white caps, cutting towards her goal, and once offshore of Achaea's vast encampments, they eased her in and hauled the sh black ship high far up on the sand and shored her with timbers. Then they scattered each to his own ship and shelter. So. I'm getting the impression our party, our heroes, uh, and Agamemnon, are over here in Troy. And so they sail over here to Chrysi um, in order to give the daughter back. And that distance, I want to actually look up because they don't specify how long that takes. They're just sort of like, they went and then they arrived and all was fine. Um, but let's just do a quick Google Maps distance here. If this was Troy and this is Crises, it's like 50 miles, 55 miles as the crow flies between Crisi and Troy. So on a boat, that's like two days. Maybe more, maybe less. And then once they did that, they they turn, they turn put on their white sails instead of their black sails, I think. And then they had great wind and made it back to Troy. 
And when they got back to Troy, they brought the ships up onto shore, shored her up with timbers. I think that means, you know, to prevent the ship from like slipping down the beach if high tide comes or something, you know, keep the ship nice and proper or set up in a way to shore something up is to like stack wood against it to hold it in place. So I don't know exactly what how they're shoring it up, but they shored it up. And then they scattered each to his own ship and shelter. But he raged on, grimly camped by his fast fleet, the, su the royal son of Peleus, the swift runner Achilles. Now he no longer haunted the meeting grounds where men win glory. Now he no longer went to war, but day after day ground his heart out, waiting there, yearning, always yearning for battle cries and combat. But now as the twelfth dawn after this shone clear, the gods who live forever marched home to Olympus, all in a long cortege. Cortege? And Zeus led them on. And Thetis did not forget her son's appeals. She broke from a cresting wave at first light and soaring up to the broad sky and Mount Olympus, found the son of Kronos, that's Zeus, gazing down on the world, peaks apart from the other gods and seated high on the topmost crown of the rugged, rugged, ridged Olympus. Rugged, ridged Olympus and crouching down at his feet, quickly grasping his knees with her left hand, her right hand holding him underneath his chin. She prayed to the Lord God Zeus, the son of Kronos. Zeus, Father Zeus, if ever I served you well amongst the deathless gods with a, wor with a word or action, bring this prayer to pass. Honor my son Achilles, doomed to the shortest life of any man on earth. And now the Lord of men, Agamemnon, has disgraced him, seizes and keeps his prize, tears her away, himself but you exalt him zoo olympian zeus your urgings rule the world come grant the trojans victory after victory till the greek armies pay my dear son back building him building higher the honor he deserves so achilles is being a total dick too he tells his demigod mother to go have zeus help his enemies kill his allies until his allies are like achilles we need you this is some petty fucking shit right here these men that i've been fighting alongside of zeus father of my mother uh help my enemies kill all of my allies until my allies see what a terrible they mistake mistake they did by disgracing me and beg for me to come back and like give me loot and prizes and then i'll fight the the trojans wow these these greek quote unquote heroes are deeply flawed and deeply petty but like deeply dramatic <laughs> so his mom talks to Zeus. She paused, but Zeus, who commands the storm clouds, answered nothing. The father sat there, silent. It seemed an eternity. But Thetis, clasping his knees, held on. So she's holding his knees with one hand, and her other hand is under his chin. Hand on the knees, hand under the... I can't, like, that's a weird position. Whatever. She paused, but Zeus, who commands the storm clouds, answered nothing. The father sat there silent. It seemed an eternity, but Thetis, clasping his knees, held on and clinging, pressing her questions once more. Grant my prayer once and all, father, once and for all. Father, bow your head in assent or deny me outright. What have you to fear so I may know too well just how cruelly I am the most dishonored goddess of them all, filled with anger? Zeus, who marshals the storm clouds, answered her at last. Disaster. You will drive me into war with Hera. She will provoke me. She with her shrill abuse. And even now, in the face of all the immortal gods, she harries me perpetually. Hera charges me that I always go to battle for the Trojans. Always with you now, Hera might catch us here. I will see to this. I will bring it all to pass. Look, I will bow my head if that will satisfy you. That I remind you that among the immortal gods is the strongest, truest sign that I can give. No word or work of mine. Nothing can be revoked. There is no treachery, nothing left unfinished. Once I bow my head to say it shall be done. 
so he decreed, and Zeus, son of Kronos, bowed his craggy, dark brows, and the deathless locks came pouring down from the thunderhead of the great immortal king, and giant shockwaves spread through all Olympus. So... Achilles gets his mom to help him out. His mom goes to Zeus. Zeus says, you'll drive me into war with Hera, which I believe is his wife. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. She will provoke me with her shrill abuse. Even now in the face of the mortal, she harries me perpetually. Hera charged me that I always go to the battle for the Trojans. And away with you now. Hera may catch us here. All right, so basically, you're going to get me in trouble with my wife, who always says I take the Trojan side. Get out of here. I'm going to take care of it, even though it's going to drive me into battle with my wife. So he decreed, and Zeus, the son of Kronos, bowed his craggly dark brows, blah, 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 shockwaves through Olympus. So the two of them made their pact and parted. Deep in the sea, she drove from the radiant Mount Olympus. Zeus went back to his own halls, and all the gods in full assembly rose from their seats once more to meet the father striding toward them now. None dared remain at rest as Zeus advanced. They all sprang up to greet him face to face as the, he took his place before them on his throne. But Hera knew it. She had seen how Thetis, the old man of the sea's daughter, Thetis quick on her glistening feet was hatching plans with Zeus. And suddenly Hera turned the father, son of Kronos, Ta not turned, taunted the father, son of Kronos. So who of the gods this time, my treacherous one, was hatching plans with you? Always your pleasure, whenever my back is turned, to settle things with your in your grand clandestine way. You never dine, do you, freely and frankly, to share your plots with me, never not a word. Dine means to choose. Um... The father of men and gods replied sharply, Hera, stop hoping to fathom all my thoughts. You will find them a trial, though you are my wife. Whatever is right for you to hear, no one, trust me, will know of it before you, neither god nor man. Whatever I choose to plant apart from all the gods, no more of your everlasting questions, probe and pry no more. Hera, baby, if it was important for you to know, you'd be the first one to know. But since it's not important for you to know, I'm not going to tell you shit. These, these gods. So much drama. Holy shit. Every sentence is laden with, like, juicy, juicy gossip. Stuff is better than a soap opera. And Hera, the queen, her dark eyes wide, exclaimed, Dread Majesty, Son of Kronos, what are you saying? Now surely I've never probed or pried in the past. Why don't you scheme to your heart's content without a qualm in the world for me? But now I have a terrible fear that she has won you over. Thetis, the old man of the sea's daughter. Thetis, with her glistening feet. Oh, those feet, they just glisten. I know it. Just at dawn, she knelt down beside you and grasped your knees and I suspect you bowed your head in assent to her. You granted once and for all to exult Achilles now and slaughter hordes of Greeks pinned against their ships. And Zeus, who marshals the thunderheads, returned. Maddening one, you and your eternal suspicions, I can never escape you. Ah, but tell me, Hera, just what can you do about all this? Nothing, only estrange yourself from me a little more, and all the worse for you, if what you say is true, that must be my pleasure. Now go sit down, be quiet now, obey my orders for the fear of the gods, however many Olympus holds, and are powerless to protect you when I come, to throttle you with my irresistible hands. <laughs> Dude, this is fucking awesome. This is this is the spat of a married couple exactly. This is, you know, one person being like, "What what was she doing talking to you? I saw you agree to her telling you to do something. What is she telling you to do?" And him being like, "What are you talking about? You're always so suspicious. Sit down, be quiet. You're 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 just going to get like drive a wedge between us even further." But it's not just like random married couples, it's gods and they have titles like and Zeus who marshals the thunderheads and it sounds all epic. But then what he says is just like 
like the same shit any husband would say to any wife in the middle of a fight. Zeus, the who marshals the Thunderheads, returned. Maddening one and your eternal suspicions. I can never escape you. But tell me, Hera, just what can you do about all this? Nothing. It's it's really entertaining, amusing, um, and pretty epic to have these like lofty deities with their petty differences and their like very ordinary like marital spouts this shit's bomb um are powerless to protect you when i come to throttle you with my irresistible hands and i don't think he means my hands are like irresistible i think he means you can't stop my hands like you cannot resist it when i come to throttle you he subsided but hera the queen her eyes wider was terrified yeah because he just threatened to strangle his wife she sat in silence she wrenched her will to his, and throughout the halls of Zeus, the gods of heaven quaked with fear. Hephaestus, the master craftsman, rose up to harangue them all, trying now to bring his loving mother a little comfort, the white-armed goddess Hera. Oh, disaster! That's what it is, and I will be unbearable if the two of you must come to blows this way. Flinging the gods in chaos just for mortal men? No more joy for us in the sumptuous feast when riot rules the day. I urge you, mother, you know that I am right. Work back into his good graces so that father, our beloved father, where Neville will never wheel on us again. Send our banquets crashing, the Olympian lord of lightning. What if he would like to blast us from our seats? He is far too strong. Go back to him, mother. Stroke father with soft winning words. At once Olympian will turn at, at once the Olympian will turn to kindness again. So Zeus threatens to strangle his wife if she doesn't shut the fuck up. And she's like scared as shit. And her son's like, mom, you got to go back. You got to say nice things to him. You got to get him back on your side again. This is going to be hugely problematic. Just like he's fucking, he's fucking Zeus. He's the king of the gods. He's all powerful. You got to like win him over with words. Okay. You can't confront him. Pleading, springing up with two handed, with a two handed cup. He reached it towards his loving mother's hands with his own winning words. Patience, mother, grieved as you are, bear up or dear as you are. I have to see you beaten right before my eyes. I would be shattered. What could I do to save you? It's hard to fight the Olympian strength for strength. You remember the last time I rushed to your defense? He seized my foot, hurled me off the tremendous threshold, and all day long I dropped. I was dead weight, and then when the sun went down, down I plunged on Lemnos. Little breath left in me. Lemnos must be someplace in Greece. Uh, little left breath left in me, but the mortals there soon nursed the fallen immortal back to life. At that, the at that the white-armed goddess Hera smiled and smiling took the cup from her child's hand. Then, dipping sweet nectar up from the mixing bowl, he poured it round to all the immortals, left to right. And uncontrollable laughter broke from the happy gods as they watched the god of fire breathing hard and bustling through the halls. And that hour then, and all day long till sun went down, they feasted, and no god's hunger lacked a share of the handsome banquet, and the gorgeous lyre Apollo struck the gorgeous lyre, lyre the instrument, um, the instrument is gorgeous, the gorgeous lyre Apollo struck, or the muse's singing voice to voice inquires their vibrant music rising. At last, when the sun's fiery light had set, each immortal went to rest in his own house, and splendid high halls Hephaestus built for each with all his craft and cunning. The famous crippled smith and Olympian Zeus, the lord of lightning, went to his own bed, where he always had lain, and welcomed sleep came on him. There he climbed, and there he slept, and by his side lay Hera the queen, the goddess of the golden throne. That is book one of the Iliad, called Achille, the Rage of Achilles. Book two is called The Great Gathering of Armies. Um, but I'm a little bit confused. I thought this story was going to start with Helen being taken from Troy or from Argos. I thought the story was going to start there, but it starts with us on the beaches of Troy when the Greek armies are getting killed because Chryses didn't get Chryseis back from Agamemnon. Um, there was a, like, I don't know, 
90 pages of introduction that I skipped over because it was 90 pages. Okay, 76 pages of introduction. Um, but like, maybe we should have skimmed some of that. I'm just going to see if there's anything in here that would give us some like context, spellings of names, the Trojans, the Greeks. Where's my table of contents? Okay. The introduction. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. German analysis. Most likely date for the composition of the Iliad is in the 50 years from 725 to 675 BCE. So that makes this story 2,700 years old. It's also time to which the earliest examples of Greek alphabet writing can be dated. Did Homer take advantage of the new technique to record few future singers, the huge poem he composed without the aid of writing? Blah, 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 the Trojan War. The background of the rage of Achilles is the war between the assembled armies on the of the Achaean cities, the, the Greek cities, and Troy, a rich fortified city on the coast of Asia Minor near the Hellespont. Um, that's over here in modern day Turkey. Uh, this is modern day Turkey. This is modern day something. I don't know how far Turkey goes. Oh, it must go to here. This must be the border of Turkey, I suppose. Um, so Troy is over here. Greece is over here. Um, do, 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 do. For the Greeks of latter ages, the Iliad was history. Even Thysidius, who cast a critical eye on the Council of the Past, except the Panachaean expedition against Troy, though he thought Homer exaggerated its size and importance. It's not until the 19th century that the, histor the historicity of Homer's war was seriously questioned. So for about 2,000 years, no one really questioned this as the truth. And then in the 1800s, some people are like, well, did this really happen? Um, blah, 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 blah. There is no attempt to gloss over the harsh realities in the work of killing um, or no attempt either to sentimentalize the pain and degradation of violent death. But, and then here's an example of that. Thrawn tipped arrow hitting his right buttock under the pelvic bone so the lance pierced the bladder, sank in the spot, hunched his dear companion's arms, gasping out for life that writhed along the ground like an earthworm, stretched out in death, blood pooling, soaking the earth dark red. Great bloody stories. I'm kind of hoping that there was like a kind of Trojans. The city, the city, but the wealth of Troy is apparent, blah, blah, blah. So the sons in similar turns. Do ransoms refused, war is turned savage, final phase. Unfortunately for Troy, the Trojans, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but where the hell? Gods, the subject of the poem is the rage of Achilles against Agamemnon, a human passion, but the prologue speaks also of gods. What god drove them to fight with such fury? Okay, so does that mean that the second chapter, book two, the great gathering of armies? When do we get the, like, what happened before, like, the setup? 
that in book two? Book three? Book three is Helen Reviews the Champions. I don't know. The Tide of Battle turns. Hector returns to Troy. I feel like we're missing the start of all of this. The Iliad doesn't start or stop or end when people thing it's not really a story about the war as a whole it's never explained in detail the trojan horse isn't even in this story what uh is maybe the trojan horse is in the odyssey Okay, so we just start with the war, but we don't start with how the war began. Uh, whatever the case, we are going to take a break right here. Um, how much time do we have before Deadly Dungeon? An hour and a half, and we've been at this for about two hours. How long is this chapter? I would like to do another chapter if we can, uh, you know, book two, but we might not have time. Book one was 22 pages. Book two is... 29 pages but we probably won't have to look things up as much um whatever the way we're gonna take a break we'll come back we'll probably read some of book two we probably won't finish it um, but i'll see you guys shortly on the other side of this break <laughs> 